What does FNAF Help Wanted hype in the playoff camera in the parts and service and vent repair minigames? When dealing with horrific killer animatronics, you're bound to face a few hiccups along the way. In parts and service, the shoe is on the other foot though. And these robotic mascots actually need our help before they can get back to performing on stage. We'll also be putting our hard hat on and repairing some ventilation systems to maintain that perfect 72 degrees. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at these repair minigames as we dissect how they work behind the scenes, including how Ennard attacks the player in Vent Repair's elevator, and what happens when Foxy jump scares you in parts and service. We have a lot more than that to cover as well, so I hope you enjoy this look behind the scenes of Help Wanted. Now really quick, I'll recap the parts and service minigames before we continue. Heading into parts and service, each of these minigames involves a player performing maintenance on the original cast of Amatrox. Starting with Bonnie, their guitar is out of tune, and in order to fix it, you have to remove their faceplate by taking their eyes out and then pressing the buttons on their jaw. In doing so, Bonnie's harmonization module can be accessed, and we simply correct the sour note by pressing the corresponding button. Once completed, we then reverse our steps in order to close them up. As for Chica, some pizza must be removed from their exterior before we can open up their beak using some buttons. We then use some chemical spray to remove some insects as we reattach her arm and then place a cupcake plate in her hand. We then eat some pizza to finish the night. In Freddy's minigame, we must remove a child's hat from his mouth before opening up his chest cavity, where we then have to remove a wristwatch as well. There's also a shoe stuck inside, and we must extract the music box before we can access it. When replacing the music box, the player will drop it, which Freddy doesn't seem too happy about. And once complete, we'll then press his nose and close up his chest cavity. Finally, there is Foxy, who looks to be in pretty bad shape. You must first put his head back on, which results in him malfunctioning and beginning to move unpredictably. In order to fix this, a handful of fuses need to be replaced, which is made difficult by his sporadic movement. After doing so, we then put Foxy's eye back in a socket, bringing this night to a close. Throughout these mini games, even a single mistake will result in a jump scare, and the blacklight versions of these levels make things even harder. The lighting and models are changed, as well as the repair process being slightly different on some nights, which I'll be explaining as we go. Recap aside, let's head back to Bonnie's night and brand things up. So moving the camera back a bit, we'll see this entire minigame takes place atop a small piece of checkered flooring that is just floating here. The darkness usually obscures your view of the surrounding area, so you'd never know this level comes to an end just out of the player's sight. Something we wanted to check out was what happens when we deposit Bonnie's eyes into the cleaning receptacles. And as you can see, when we drop the eye inside, it'll fall down towards this hole before unloading. The machine begins making noise, and after a few seconds, the eye will pop back into existence right here in front of us. With her eyes removed, Bonnie's model is pretty sinister looking, and it only gets worse when we open up their faceplate. In the current state, they look similar in appearance to Withered Bonnie, which is pretty creepy. Something else I noticed is that when moving the camera behind Bonnie, we can see straight into their animatronic suit. Their back is not visible from this angle, but when moving inside of their model, we'll see that this particular section is only visible from the inside. Of course, we will never know this because the player is incapable of looking at them from this perspective. The jump scares in parts and service are pretty neat because depending on how we interacted with these animatronics, these animations will be changed as well. As you can see, we have Bonnie's faceplate in the upright position, and by triggering a jump scare, we'll see that it will still be open when the player is warped up to the jump scare location within this map. Something I found a bit odd though, is that when only a single eye is attached, during their jump scare it will be in the wrong socket. Something else you may have noticed is that Bonnie's guitar is not completely intact either, as the buttons we use for tuning this instrument are not present during their jump scare sequence. Bonnie's blacklight minigame is mostly the same as the original, except their lighting and music have changed, and Bonnie has been replaced by the hard mode variant, Neon Bonnie, also known as Beacon Bonnie. Now we've seen this animatronic in previous levels, including Night 6 of the FNAF 1 area and the Funtime Foxy level in the dark rooms. In this minigame though, the texture has been properly applied to Bonnie's model and is not glitching out. Well, that is until we get jump scared, where it appears once more. The map surrounding the player is also a bit different, with the inclusion of these hanging star decorations and explosions of confetti raining down on top of us. That's it for Bonnie though, so let's take a look at Chica's Night. So first things first, we can take a look at this map, and you'll immediately notice that this location is quite a bit different from Bonnie's. Although they both take place on a piece of checkered flooring, there is a large, white, one-sided sphere surrounding the gameplay area here. While taking a look out of bounds, I also noticed something a bit strange. Directly underneath Chica, there is a small, yellow, crescent-shaped object floating in the void. Anytime I move the camera closer, it would unload though. 
I'm not sure if it was a bounding box issue with the game thinking it shouldn't render the object or what, so I was unable to see exactly what it was. If any of you might know what this is, let me know in the comments. Up above the player, we can see that the chemical spray mechanism just comes to an end just out of the player's view. So kind of like Bonnie, if we take a look behind Chica, the back of her head is not visible from the outside. Once again, if we take a look from the inside of their suit, we can see that this part of her model can only be seen from one side. Next, I want to see what happens when cockroaches begin crawling out of Chica's head. And as you can see, they'll load in directly behind her left eye before making their way to the suit's exterior. What's interesting is that as they crawl around, they will eventually come back to the spot where they are clipping through her endoskeleton. They'll stay here for just a moment before they continue crawling through Chica's suit. We can also see that when multiple roaches end up here, they'll clip into one another seamlessly. As for Chica's blacklight level, we can see that her standard model has been replaced with Neon Chica, and there are now massive roaches circling the player. This night is mostly the same, except the chemical spray only works once. And after that, we'll have to remove the roaches from Chica's suit individually by hand. Mr. Cupcake has also been replaced by Nightmare Cupcake as well. Moving the camera to these roaches out of bounds, we'll see that they are quite large. With the lighting effects disabled, they are a greenish brown color as opposed to the neon red we typically see. Moving the camera back, you'll notice that they're actually rotating just beyond the white sphere that surrounds this level. What's interesting is that even if we freeze time, these particular roaches are unaffected for some reason, but not completely. Even though they're still circling around us, their animations are tied to the game's speed. So, if we speed the game up, they'll run extremely fast. It's super funny watching them scurry like this while still moving at a brisk pace. Glorious! But now let's jump ahead to Freddy's minigame. Loading into this map, we'll find we are surrounded by workbenches, toolboxes, and a few cardboard boxes. Freddy is sitting on a small metal box in front of us, waiting for the player to fix them up. Now for the most part, there isn't much to look at in this level, besides the, uh, floating ceiling? The roof of this map has a small light on it that helps illuminate this area, but it's not actually attached to anything. Inside of Freddy's suit, we can see his inner machinations alongside the objects we must extract, including a child's shoe. During regular gameplay, it would be hard to notice that it's just clipping through the back of his model. This level's hard mode variation is probably the most modified of the parts and service minigames, as the majority of our surroundings have been changed. Freddy is now jet black in appearance, with his facial features glowing white, and as we look around this room, these screens of static will begin turning on around us. There are silhouettes of toys floating in this area, and we are also surrounded by a bunch of Freddies. This level has a grayscale effect applied as well, so everything we see is black and white. Now, moving the camera around, you'll see that these screens are actually just looping flat videos, placed within the white sphere surrounding this location. We can also take a closer look at the animatronics on this map, and they're pretty terrifying up close. They quickly shake side to side as they stare the player down, and we can even freeze time to see their models in all their glory. With the processing effects disabled, it's a bit easier to see this map in its entirety, including the fact that the floor is missing. There are a few assets from the original map still present, but everything else has been removed, including the ground beneath our feet. Freddy also looks quite a bit different, as their suit is now a flat gray texture, and their eyes and teeth are solid red. Their endoskeleton and other mechanical parts are unchanged, however. Heading to Foxy's Night, if we take a look beneath the map, there's a small object placed here that I do not recognize. It's a small, almost puzzle-shaped object that is covered in a basic grid material. It's directly underneath Foxy, but I'm not certain of its purpose. But now let's take a look at Foxy's Jump Scare, because it is definitely the most unique in the Parts and Service minigame. So when Foxy jump scares the player, the lights will dim for a second before coming back in to reveal they have now disappeared. After a few seconds, they will come sprinting at us from the darkness before ultimately jump scaring us. With the lights on, we can see how Foxy will just vanish instantly when making a mistake. As Foxy reappears to attack the player, they'll load back in just beyond the map's checkered flooring. They then sprint towards the player, and once close enough, they'll be moved to a gray sphere above this map where the jump scare then plays out. Something you'll notice is that even though Foxy's eye has not been reattached yet, during their jump scare, both eyes will be in their proper place. Now, something I find pretty funny is that when Foxy is still running at you, their position is tied to the player's camera, meaning they will always be in the center of your vision. And from another perspective, we can watch them slide across the floor as we move our camera in-game. Heading into Foxy's blacklight level, there are embers and smoke surrounding the gameplay area as we perform our maintenance tasks. Their left eye is glowing brightly, and their body is burnt and charred from top to bottom. 
If we brighten things up and take a quick look at the map, we'll see that this night takes place atop a burnt wooden floor. Most of the platform is covered in black charring, and there are also these molten cracks growing outward from the center. That's everything I found in the parts and service minigames though, so now let's take a dive into vent repair. So in vent repair, there are two nights to complete, and both of these nights have a black light variant as well. On Mangle's night, we're placed within the ventilation system of a Freddy Fazbear's pizza. And after pressing a button and pulling a lever, we'll find that Mangle goes in here with us. From here, our objective is to complete a handful of tasks, including a game of Simon Says, turning some valves to stop the leaking pipes, and pulling levers in the correct order to complete the night. All the while, Mango will be attacking the player through these ventilation ducts and must be stopped using our flashlight. Once complete, the doors will close and we can move on to night two. The second night brings us to Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rental, where we have a lot more on our plate. We will complete several puzzles as we make our way down this massive elevator shaft to the boiler room, with each section growing harder than the previous. First up is the breaker room, where you must press some buttons in the correct order by following their wires to the corresponding breaker boxes. In the third vent, Ennard will begin moving throughout this room, only becoming visible during the intermittent flashes of light. If you make too many mistakes or do not complete this puzzle in time, you will ultimately be jump scared by Ennard. After completing this section, Ennard will attempt to reach us through the closing gate. Next, there's a series of gears that must be moved in the correct order before we can progress. Ennard will also be moving throughout this area, and you have to avoid looking at them for too long to avoid a jump scare. In the final section, there are a couple of pipes that must be rotated in order to finish our repairs within the boiler room. And once completed, Completed, flames will lighten up the boiler, and we hear Ennard screeching from off camera, bringing this night to a close. Heading back to Mangle's night, we can move the camera back for a better look at this location, and we'll see that it is a large, plus-shaped vent system with a player being placed in the center. While taking a look at the map, I noticed Mangle was in the idle pose, just chilling underneath of us. As I moved the camera around, I saw they were flashing between their regular texture and this black and white one. I have a hunch as to why this is, which I'll get to in just a moment. So when we initially turn the lights on, Mangle appears directly in front of the player before bolting back into the darkness. With the lighting effects disabled, you'll see that they immediately load in here when we hit that switch, before receding back into the vent where they will be moved back to their idle location in the void. Something I found kind of interesting is that this night's jump scare actually takes place beneath the map near their idle location, as opposed to the gray sphere we've seen in previous minigames. In the blacklight version of this level, it's mostly the same except the lights will be changed, and all the vents are opened immediately instead of opening as we progress. Another difference is that Shadow Mangle will begin their assault on the player alongside their standard counterpart. We can actually watch as both of these animatronics approach us at once, and it's nothing short of horrifying. As for the flickering model I mentioned earlier, I believe this is because these characters are stored in the exact same location beneath this level, resulting in their models Z-fighting with being rendered as they're clipping through each other. As you can see, when Mangle jump scares a player, they are moved to the side and Shadow Mangle remains in the original position. Finally, there's a chance when loading into this level that Endo-02 will appear beneath the player in this vertical duct. They're holding on to the steel grates we're standing on with their feet against the wall, and they'll remain down here until the night ends or the player restarts. We can't typically get a good look at them from this angle, but if we delete the vent cover, we can see them in all their glory. They are completely harmless, but this is definitely not something I want to see looking up at me, especially in the dark. That's all I could find in this location though, so let's jump ahead to Ennard's Night and have a look around. First off, we can take a look at the area we load into, as it's a fully modeled room. We'll be taking another look at this room a bit later, but for now we can follow the elevator shaft down and see all the areas we will eventually arrive at. In the current state, there are only a handful of props loaded in, such as the buttons and wires used in the breaker room, and the rest of the assets are unloaded to keep game resources down. The moving gates and gears are loaded in down below, as well as the boiler we are ultimately attempting to repair. This elevator shaft is absolutely massive though, and it's pretty cool to see it all in one shot. Way, way on the distance, we can find Ennard is stored until they are moved into the gameplay area. It's no wonder they only show up a handful of times. This commute must be exhausting. So the way this level works is the moment we start moving down the elevator, the previous floor will unload, and the following one will load in at the same time. The player's vision is obscured at this time, so it appears to be a seamless transition. Each of the vent areas in the breaker room will be loaded in the moment we arrive, and the doors will slide open as we progress. Taking a look inside the third puzzle, it's actually pretty spacious, although there's not a lot inside to look at. We can, however, watch as Ennard teleports between the various locations. This movement is typically hidden by the darkness, but here you can see he's moving around using instant transmission. 
When Eddard attacks a player here, we can watch from a different angle as they warp above the door and latch onto it, peeking in at the player. The door then slams, and Eddard just kinda chills here upside down. Glorious? After this, we watch the following puzzle as it loads in. And though the previous area has been unloaded, Eddard is still hanging upside down by the door. There isn't much to see in the following areas, but I was curious what happened when we activated the boiler down below. When we press the button, fire will erupt inside, and although we hear a slam followed by Ennard screeching, they are nowhere to be seen. The elevator will begin to rise once more, and the night comes to an end. Finally, we can switch over to the blacklight variation of this level, where we'll see a lot has changed. This map is now full of different assets and animatronic parts, including Foxy's endoskeleton from Parts and Service, and a decapitated Freddy Fazbear. In the elevator shaft, we can find Nightmare Fredbear's head, Funtime Foxy's leg, a decapitated plush baby, Bonnie's bottom jaw and ear, and dozens more that I don't have the time to list off. In the breaker room, the second puzzle now has Springtrap crawling towards the player, meaning you have a limited time to complete this section before you are jump scared. Once completed though, Springtrap will backtrack to their starting location before freezing in place for the rest of the night. After this area unloaded though, I spotted this massive Phantom Freddy that we can see walking around in the distance. They will endlessly circle the gameplay area, and it's pretty scary just how big they are compared to the player. In this section of the elevator, the Nightmare Endo is also present, constantly staring at the player from beyond the elevator. That's not the scariest thing in here though, as just beside us, we'll find Balloon Boy holding Toy Freddy's head on a stick like a balloon. At the end of the level, we'll find that the boiler is now full of some tangled up endoskeletons, and we can watch up close as they begin to burn. The ending in this area is also changed, as Ennard will now leap onto the elevator before it begins plummeting downwards. Things don't look good for either party though, since the elevator is now falling beneath the map itself and directly into the void. And with that, that is everything I found hidden out of bounds in the parts and service and vent repair areas. There's still a fair bit for us to cover, so make sure you subscribe today, that way you'll be notified when my next video is released. Thanks for watching, and cheers!